Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrill's Algebra 2 class. Uh, today we're starting Chapter 5 and we're talking about adding and subtracting polynomials. And in order to add and subtract polynomials, you really have to understand and know what polynomials are. So we're going to start with the most basic type of polynomials and work our way upwards and then we're going to learn by the end of the day how to name and recognize polynomials and how to add and subtract polynomials. And the first type of polynomial we're going to deal with is called a monomial. And a monomial is any real number, variable, or product of numbers and one or more variables with whole number exponents. The variables must be in the numerator in order to be classified as a monomial. So basically a monomial is any term. It's any number, any variable, or any product of numbers and or variables. The variable must be in the numerator. If the variable is in the denominator, it is not a polynomial. Okay, If the exponent is negative, it is not a polynomial. If the exponent of the variable is a fraction, it is not a polynomial. Okay, If the variable is inside of a radical of any form, it is not a polynomial. So 6, that's a number. So it's a polynomial. We're good. It's a monomial. It's one term. Negative 4y squared, that's all good. The variables in the numerator, the exponents, a positive uh, integer, we're good. x, it's a variable. We're fine. w over 3, w is in the numerator. The exponent is a positive whole number. We're golden. 2.5xy cubed, the variables are in the numerator and they are positive exponents. We're golden. Examples of non-monomials. 8 over x. You cannot have x or a variable in the denominator. That makes it a non-monomial, a non-polynomial. x over the square root of y. First of all, you have a variable in the denominator. Secondly, you have a variable inside of a radical. Monomials or polynomials are not inside of radicals. x to the negative fourth power. A monomial cannot have a negative exponent. Those are not monomials. Okay? So again, a polynomial, a one-term polynomial is called a monomial, and they consist of numbers, variables, or products of numbers and or variables where the variables are in the numerator and the exponents of the variables are positive whole numbers. Does that make sense, boys? Okay. Now, there's something called the degrees of a monomial and the degrees of a polynomial. Okay. A monomial is a type of polynomial. A monomial is a one-term polynomial. And the degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of its variables. The degree of a non-zero constant is zero. And zero has no degree. So, the degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of its variables. So the degree of the following monomial would be 2. Because there's an invisible exponent of 1 here for the x and an invisible exponent of 1 here for the y. So the degree of xy would be 2. The degree of x squared y cubed would be 5. The degree of 5x squared y to the fourth would be 6. Okay? So the degree of a monomial is the sum of the variable exponents. 
Mr. Morrow, what about the exponent of the 5? Well, the 5 is a number, and a number by itself, that's a constant. Okay, it's a non-zero constant, and the degree of a non-zero constant is 0. Not the exponent. The exponent is 1, but the degree is 0. So the degree of a monomial is very easy to find. It is simply the sum of the variable exponents. Do not worry about the exponents of the whole numbers. It is simply the, the sum of the variable exponents. That is the degree of a monomial. So what is the degree of the following monomial here? Negative 4, x squared, y cubed, z to the fourth. What would the degree of that monomial be, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Because 2 plus 3 plus 4, the degree would be 9. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, let's expand upon that. That's the degree of a monomial. Now, let's find the degree of a polynomial. Okay? A monomial is a one-term polynomial. A polynomial is multiple terms. If you have one term, it's a monomial. Two terms, it's a binomial. Three terms, it's a trinomial. And we'll get into that in more detail. But a polynomial has many terms. And the degree of a polynomial is the highest degreed monomial within the polynomial. So, for example, if I have 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. There are three different terms here. If you guys remember from Algebra 1, terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So there are one, two, three different terms, three different monomials. Since there are three different monomials here, there are three terms, this is called a tri Polynomial. This polynomial has three terms, so it's a trinomial. The degree of this trinomial belongs to the highest degreed monomial. What's the degree of this monomial here? Two. What's the degree of this monomial here? What's the degree of this monomial here? So what's the degree of this polynomial? Good, it's a second degree polynomial. Does that make sense, guys? What would the degree of this polynomial be, gentlemen? What would the degree of that polynomial be, gentlemen? It would be five, very good. The degree of this monomial is 3, of this monomial is 5, and the degree of this monomial is 4. So the degree of this whole polynomial would be 5. Very good. So do you guys see the difference between degree of a monomial and degree of a polynomial? Very important here, guys. Promise? All right. May I continue, my brothers? Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, so let's practice. What is the degree of each po polynomial? Okay, brothers, what is the degree of this polynomial right here? For A. Yes, very good. The degree here is 1. Very good. How about for B? What's the degree of? Zero. Very good, 0. How about for C? Very good, 5. Okay, how about for D? Second degree, very good. How about E? Yes, the highest degree monomial here, so the degree of this polynomial is 2. How about for F? Very good. The degree of that polynomial is 7. Does that make sense, my brothers? Now, you can name polynomials by degree. First degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, sixth degree. Okay? You can also name them by term number. A monomial, mono, one, mono, monomial, it's a one-term polynomial, like, for example, 21xyz squared. By 
bi two like bicycle binomial two term polynomial. For example, two x plus three. Trinomial like tricycle three wheels. Trinomial, okay, three term polynomial. Trinomial three terms. For example, negative eight y squared plus seven x minus three w. Anything after that doesn't have an official name attached to it. It's four or more terms would just be called an nth term polynomial. So if I have four terms, it would be a four term polynomial. If I have seven terms, it would be a seven term polynomial. If I have nine terms, it'd be a nine term polynomial. Okay? So how do we put it together with degrees and terms? Let me show you. Let's say I had 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus minus 7. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4 terms, third degree. So how do you think you would combine this? Very good, son. No, this would be a third degree. This would be a third degree, comma, four term polynomial. Very good. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to everybody? Promise? Okay. May I continue? Okay. Now, the degrees have special names as well as the term numbers, okay? Standard form of a polynomial. When they ask you to write something in standard form, that means that the polynomial is written with the degree of its monomial terms decreasing from left to right. So that means it goes from largest to smallest. The degree of a polynomial is the degree of the highest degree monomial with, within the polynomial. We know that already. So for this little table, we're going to fill this in together. Okay? We're going to name the degree by the official name. We're going to, um, sorry, name the terms by the official term. And you've got to commit this to memory. This is not something that you don't need to know. This is something you need to know forever. So the polynomial that I'm giving you here is just a plain old 6. What is the degree of a constant? 0. Oh, okay, very good. What is the name that we use for this degree? No. First of all, monomial, guys, would be for the number of terms. This goes back from Algebra 1. It's okay if we don't remember. When you have a 0 degree, this is called a constant. Now, how many terms do we have here? One term. What is the name of the polynomial with one term? A monomial. Very good. Awesome. Monomial. Okay. Next one. I've got 5x plus 9. What is the degree of this polynomial? 1. When the degree is 1, does anyone remember what the name is when the exponent of x is 1? Come on, guys. Linear, I heard that out there. Good job, linear. Very good, guys. Very good. How many terms? Two. Very good. What is the name of a two-term polynomial? Binomial. Very good. You guys are doing great. Awesome. Very good, guys. Next, what is the degree of this polynomial here? Two. Very good. Does anyone remember the name used when... The exponent is 2. Very good, my brother. Quadratic. Very good. Quadratic. Very awesome. And the number of terms here? 3. What name do we use for a three-term polynomial? Trinomial. Very good. 
Next up. What is the degree of this term, of this polynomial? Three. Does anyone remember what it is when, when uh, the exponent is three? When it's a, very good, it's cubic. Very good. I told you you guys remembered. Good job. How many terms? One. And that's a monomial. Very good. Excellent job, guys. Okay, what is it? What is the degree of this next polynomial? Four. Okay. Does anyone remember, by chance, the name of that degree? Quartic. Very good. Quartic. Very good. Square does not exist. Squared is not a name of a degree, guys. But thank you for trying. How many terms? How many terms does this polynomial have? What is the name of a three-term polynomial? Trinomial. Very good. Okay. And then, last but not least, what is the degree of this polynomial? Five. Does anyone remember that one? Quintic. Very good. Quintic. How many, do, how many uh, terms? What is the name of that? Uh, that's a binomial. Very good. After degree 5, guys, it would just be an nth degree polynomial. So if the degree was 6, it would be 6th degree or 7th degree or 8th degree. But if the degree is 0, it's called constant. If it's a first degree, it's called linear. If it's a second degree, it's called quadratic. Third degree, it's called cubic. Fourth, it's called quartic. Fifth, it's called quintic. Sixth and above would just be sixth degree, whatever, trinomial. Sixth degree, fifth, five-term polynomial. Eighth degree, ninth degree, tenth degree. These are the five names for the degrees you need to know. And for as far as the term numbers, you need to know monomial, one term, binomial, two terms, trinomial, three terms, Four terms and above, you would go four-term polynomial, five-term polynomial, six-term, etc., etc. Does that make sense, guys? Naming is very particular. It's very specific, and I'm very strict about it. I'll give you one final example, and then I've got to move on. What if I gave you this, guys? Um, what if I gave you... Uh, how, okay, this is where a lot of people mess up. What if I gave you this? Okay, what would this be, gentlemen, according to degree and term number? Always go by degree first. Yes, sir? So how would I name this? This would be a seventh degree, always by degree first, seventh degree, comma, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight term polynomial. Always by degree first, guys. So we had a seventh degree, comma, eight term polynomial. Does that make sense, boys? You promise. Those are the hardest ones. If I gave you something like this, 2x squared minus 3x plus 2, this would be a quadratic trinomial. Because there is a special word for a degree of 2. It's called quadratic. There is a special word for a 1, 2, 3-term polynomial. It's called a trinomial. You promise you got this, guys. This gets a lot of people always. And I want to make sure you've got this down pat. Thank you, my brothers. May I continue? Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, guys, now. Now it's easy. As long as you know what the polynomials were, now you could recognize uh, like terms. If you remember, we've gone over what like terms are already. Like terms are terms that have the same variable letter raised to the same exact power. When we're adding and subtracting polynomials, 
we can only add and subtract those terms that are like terms. So when I ask you to add x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x minus 7x cubed plus 5x squared minus 12, first thing we're going to do is distribute this negative, guys. Old skills that are being put to use. So this is x cubed minus uh, cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x minus 7x cubed minus 5x squared plus 12. Now I add like terms, my brothers. I'm a little bit um, neurotic about this, so I take my time. A lot of people laugh at me, but whatever. I always get it right. I label what I'm going to add. I know that x cubed and negative 7x cubed are the only like terms right now. So 1x cubed minus 7x cubed, I got negative 6x cubed. I'm done with that and I scratched it out. Now I know that negative 3x squared and negative 5x squared are like terms. Negative 3x squared minus 5x squared, sign to the same, I add and keep the sign, negative 8x squared. Now I've got 5x, and I've only got a 5x, there are no other x's, so plus 5x. And then I've got a 12 by itself, so plus 12. Ding dong, the witch is gone. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's literally that easy. Yes, sir. You don't add the exponents together, no. You add the exponents when you're multiplying the same variables, and we're going to get to that skill eventually. But right now, we're adding like terms. Think of adding like terms, guys, like going to the market. And I'm not being sarcastic. Think about this. You have five apples. Now your, your, your mom comes and she gives you another three apples. Don't you have eight apples now? Well, think about like terms the same way. I had one x cubed. Don't I have another negative 7x cubed? So 1x cubed minus 7x cubed gives you negative 6x cubed. Does that make sense, my brother? I had negative 3x squared minus 5x squared. Now I have negative 8x squared. Are you with me here, my man? You had the courage to ask. I want to have the courage to answer. Thank you, my brother. Okay, I'm going to have to go a little bit quick, but that's okay because there is a video. Yes, sir. This would be a cubic four-term polynomial. Thank you, my brother. So let's go ahead. I got a negative here, so I got to distribute. So I want to distribute to everything here. So I've got 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 3x cubed plus 8x squared plus 9x. If you notice, I don't skip steps, gentlemen. The negative 2x cubed and a negative, I'm sorry, a 2x cubed and a negative 3x cubed are like terms. 2x cubed minus 3x cubed is negative x cubed. Negative 5x squared plus 8x squared is positive 3x squared. Done, done. Positive 3x plus 9x is 12x, and I am done. And just for giggles, this is a cubic trinomial. Next, again, I've got to distribute the negative. If you've noticed, I like choosing the negative ones because a lot of times people forget to distribute that negative. That's the nemesis of most of my students. So I've got 4a squared b minus 3a squared b cubed plus 2ab squared. Distribute that negative. Minus 3a squared b plus 4a squared b cubed minus 5ab. Now let's add like terms. 4a squared b minus 3a squared b is 1a squared b. Goodbye. Negative 3a squared b cubed plus 4a squared b cubed is 
a squared b cubed. Goodbye. 2ab squared, that's it. That's by itself, so there's nothing I can combine that with. And then I've got minus 5ab, which I cannot combine that with anything else either. And just for giggles, if I needed to name this, this would be a quintic, because it's fifth degree, quintic four-term polynomial. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Watch the video. Please exit silently to lunch. I will finish this, I promise. Have a great day. Hope you learned a lot. Take care, guys. Now, if I'm going to evaluate, I evaluate like normal, guys, okay? Remember, evaluating is literally just plugging in and solving. So, I have two evaluations here. I want to evaluate for when x is 0 and for when x is negative 4. So, let's first do for when x is 0. I've got negative 2 times 0 cubed plus 7 times 0 plus 1. So that's 0, that's 0, so x equals 1. I'm sorry, the answer equals 1 when x is 0. When x equals negative 4, I've got negative 2 times negative 4 cubed plus 7 times negative 4 plus 1, which equals negative 2 times negative 64 minus 28 plus 1. Negative 64 times negative 2 is positive 128 minus 28 plus 1. 128 minus 28 is 100. 100 plus 1 is 101. So please don't be scared of the word evaluate. It literally just means plug it in and solve. For number 6, same thing. This time, I want you to evaluate but this time I'm giving you the value for m and n. So I want m to be negative 2 and n to be negative 4. So I've got negative 2 times m, which is negative 2. Notice that the m is being squared, so that is why I am encapsulating it in a parenthesis, squared, times n, which is negative 4, plus 3 times m, which is negative 2, times n, which is negative 4, minus n, which is negative 4 squared. So this is going to give me negative 2 times negative 2 squared, which is 4, times negative 4, plus 3 times negative 2 times negative 4 is 8, minus negative 4 squared is 16, <laughs> negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, times negative 4 is 32, plus 3 times 8 is 24, minus 16, 32 plus 24 is 56, minus 16 is 40. Please be careful with those negatives. Those negatives will get you every time, unless you follow the order of operations. Alright? So, I hope you learned a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.